Pretty proud of the fact that this coming election night will be my 18th as a journalist in New Zealand. Um, I first started as a journalist cadet on the election in 1984 in Wellington for RNZ. Uh, and as proud as I am of that longevity, our next speaker had already served a term as an MP. He is, of course, the Right Honourable Winston Peters of New Zealand First. Uh, Mike, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the brief chance to talk with you this afternoon. Now, New Zealand was not doing well before COVID-19, and COVID-19, New Zealanders as voters are feeling enormously uncertain and fear they have about our economic situation. And really they should. New Zealand First understands that. We think people understand just how difficult the economic recovery is going to be. With two major contributors to the economy, international tourism and education in moribund, the country faces a massive challenge to earn as much money as it did pre-COVID. And let's not fool ourselves, as necessary as the wage subsidy was, in its absence we're going to see a dramatic lift in unemployment, predicted to rise to over 7% next year, peaking to much higher than that in March 22 in Treasury projections. So more and more New Zealanders are adjusting to living with the job insecurity and worse. And so-called feel-good factor of the New Zealand country of wide view doing better than other countries economically is wearing very thin indeed. Now, don't get me wrong. We supported the economic approach the coalition has taken in response to COVID. In fact, New Zealand first framed for the Labour Party the philosophy that drove much of what followed in our immediate economic response. Given the historic uncertainty that the pandemic produced and with no playbook to guide us, we said that if the coalition erred, it should err on the side of being closer to the first Labour government's humanitarian response to the Great Depression than the fourth Labour government's blitzkrieg approach. The 1935 approach helped the country survive the Depression and it set up a long-term access for housing, employment and necessary welfare. It set the course also for policy stability that lasted the next 50 years. In fact, the National Party under Holyoke stole half of the policies and made them their own under the statement, a property-owning democracy. But the latter, 1984 and 1990, ideologically driven approach sent people over the cliff with no warning and no support. And 35 years on, we are still seeing the wreckage through intergenerational welfare, the explosion of inequality, and a distorted economy that doesn't give everyone the same chance to succeed or fail on their own terms. So we're proud of our contribution to the initial set of decisions the coalition took to get New Zealanders through the massive shock of lockdowns and collapsed economic activity. However, we see now that we are not doing as well as we should, and we saw that long away before COVID-19. One piece of economic data that shocked when the preview, that's the pre-election uh, economic and uh, financial fiscal and fiscal update came. Uh, Mr. Uh, Goldsmith knows it so well because he forgot to read it. He just read the budget in May and that's how he got the $8 billion blowout. Now, can I just say, when we saw the preview, it was shocking because there was a 12.2% fall in GDP when compared to Australia's fall of 7% or Taiwan at just 1.4%. We have got to get real. This challenge is twofold. First, we need to seriously grow our exports and incentivize our exporters to sell more, never more than we have needed them as people to ride on their coattails. So New Zealand's first economic policy is unashamedly pro-growth and pro-business. It would include an ironclad commitment to ensure there are no increases in personal or business taxes. We will offer a tax break for new exports of 20% and an urgent reduction of business taxation to incentivise modernisation, increased productivity and employment. New Zealand First will continue to progress free trade agreements to ensure New Zealand exporters can grow in world markets as the global economy begins to recover. We will reduce corporate tax and not forget the R&D tax credit program. 
as well as who it was in Parliament that stopped a negative capital gains tax and stopped the interference with all commercial leases. An accelerated capital depreciation regime which we think is absolutely necessary to encourage businesses large and small to invest in plant and capital. New Zealand First will bring back the 90-day work trial to all businesses. That policy is necessary because of the economic conditions and challenges we face right here, right now. We have to give employers and job seekers the best chance to grow. We need to make it easier for workers to get out and work. If it be in orchards and vineyards, New Zealand First will adjust the abatement rate so whilst the work is there, New Zealanders can go out and earn. Simply put, we can't have fruit and produce rotting on the ground and export opportunity lost anywhere around our country. Only under New Zealand First will the Provincial Growth Fund continue, targeted to business by industry and sector type and directly related to the skills and enhancement programs. Is that a bell? It's a bell. <laughs> and I just close by saying this, ladies and gentlemen, there is much more I'd like to talk to you about today, but you're facing a crisis with respect to where we go from here. If you think austerity is going to make it from here, look into history, look all around the world, and tell me where it will work. That's on one side. And borrow and hope and inexperience is on the other. You need to buy some insurance. You need to give yourself a chance to get out of there. And if you do that, you'll party vote New Zealand first. Thank you very much.